High school can be hard, and for many people, that's still selling it short. The perils of being a teen and moving through the school system has, of course, been the foundation of many great horror films. And as such, we all know the much celebrated exploits of Carrie, Freddy, and Michael, but there is also a whole host of high school horror films that have been overshadowed by the megalithic menace of the big hitters. With that in mind then, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most underrated high school horror movies. Number 10, All Cheerleaders Die. Horror comedy All Cheerleaders Die made a splash at the Toronto International Film Festival back in 2013, but secured only a limited release thereafter, and has largely been forgotten by fans of the genre. The plot follows a group of socially vampiric cheerleaders who all die in a tragic accident, and a compassionate wicker who brings them all back again. But with one major difference. Now, rather than feeding on popularity, they feed just on people. Like, literally on people. They team up to take revenge on the footballers who caused their deaths, and bloody mayhem ensues. Funny and self-aware, the film takes chunks out of the typical high school and romance genres, while utilizing many of their most essential tropes. Originally intended to be the first in a supernatural series, All Cheerleaders Die failed to launch and has since faded into the ether, outshined by straight-up teen flicks like Twilight or even more meta-horror offerings such as Happy Death Day and The Babysitter. Nonetheless, it might be time to give it another look. Is it Shakespeare? No, but it is damn entertaining. Number 9. The Final this 2010 high school horror sees the class outcasts turning the tables on their tormentors in a bloody night of revenge. Luring the jocks and the plastics into a fake house party, the outcasts don horror outfits, spike the punch, and tie up their classmates, treating them to an evening of torture that includes a cattle gun, needles, bear traps, and a corrosive acid face cream. Written and directed by unknowns Jason Cavallati and Joey Stewart respectively, the film cunningly features a number of ex-child stars using their familiarity to hammer home the horror. In keeping with the background of its killers as well, all the costumes and methods employed to take apart their classmates reference a wide array of other horror films, including the likes of Audition. It's an imperfect look at the teenage condition, but one of the few films that really tries something different. It's an ideal companion piece to something like The Cabin in the Woods. Number 8. The Craft The Craft doesn't quite have the cult status or street cred of the similarly edgy high school revenger Heathers, but bets are every goth, emo, or alternative teen since the mid-90s knows the quote, We are the weirdos, mister. What The Craft does have is a solid pre-Buffy teen witch cult, which uses the occult to right wrongs in their lives, translating high school trials and woes into supernatural quandaries on a grand scale. But what begins as playful fun and revenge takes a dramatic turn down the nasty street when the consequences of the girls' magic catch up with them, and a rift splits between Sarah and the group. Fashion and style take precedence here, but that's not to say the film is without substance. As for the first two acts, it promotes a strong sense of sorority that recognizes the girls as both heroes and villains in their own right. The Craft was a surprise box office hit at the time, but has kind of faded from view in the years since. Number 7. The Loved Ones In this movie, Xavier Samuel plays a grieving, guilt-ridden high schooler called Brent, and Robin McLeavy stars opposite him as Lola, the literal manifestation of the overly attached girlfriend meme who, after being rejected by Brent, drugs him, kidnaps him, and hosts her own one-on-one -on -one private prom. With a pink dress, a sweet smile, and a penchant for lobotomy, Lola and her father treat Brent to a night he'll never forget, intending on adding him to their cellar full of ex-boyfriends. There's a whole subplot here about Brent's dead dad that provides the impetus for both his capture and escape, but let's be honest, you'll want to watch it for the creatively cruel torture methods that he receives. Number 6. The Faculty Breakfast Club meets Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Faculty is a classic monster movie wrapped up in a high school drama, with effects work that now ventures heavily into so bad it's good territory. Starring Josh Hartnett, Famke Jansen, Jordan Brewster, and Elijah Wood as students of Harrington High, this crew of future stars have to fight off an alien invasion that begins with the infected school faculty. 
It stands alone as one of the few sci-fi sleepers of the era, but benefits from sharing in the meta-horror humor mainlined into the mainstream by Scream. There's no denying the faculty is silly through and through, ridiculous and cheesy as hell, not to mention nowhere near as original as some of its contemporaries, but there's still plenty to love if you scratch the surface. There's a reason this has maintained its status as a cult hit. Number five, Fright Night 2011. Remaking an 80s cult classic is never an easy bit of business, but Craig Gillespie and Marty Noxon's Fright Night lock loads and for the most part aims true. The late, great Anton Yelchin is front and center as Charlie Brewster in this movie, as average a teen as you can be while living in the suburbs of Vegas. Something doesn't sit right about his new neighbor Jerry though, and after ignoring warnings from his ex-best friend Evil Ed, finds out the hard way that Jerry is a vampire. It's fun, it's funny, it's pacey, and it even manages to be creepingly scary at times. But it barely made its budget back at the box office and received short shrift from critics and fans of the 1985 original. Nevertheless, the cast are on fine form overall, and David Tennant shines as Peter Vincent. Horror remakes rightfully get a lot of crap, but Fright Night is one of the better efforts. Number four, Veronica. Paco Plaza's Spanish-language Ouija horror, Veronica, may seem like a typical Catholic schoolgirl possession film from afar, but it is anything but. Veronica may have three siblings to look after almost single-handedly, but she's still your typical teen when it comes to high school. Neither popular nor outcast, and comfortable enough to dodge the class eclipse viewing and go summoning the spirit of her dead dad in the basement instead. She doesn't bank on what comes to her instead though, and unfortunately for her, the shadow of a demon stalks her for the rest of the film. Like both Ouija films combined, but with a fraction of their budgets, double the artistic credibility and three times the scares, it manages to maintain goosebumps for extensive periods, opting to never rely on jump scares and going deep on the mounting dread that carries it fluidly from first frame to last. While the film was selected for the 2017 Toronto International Film Festival's lineup and was nominated for a smattering of awards thereafter, it has since languished within the Netflix algorithms, enjoying neither a wide exposure nor the world of mouth appreciation that often follows an English language release of similar caliber. Number three, Scream 4. In 2011, Scream 4 did the unthinkable and went meta inside an already double meta universe. That's like 16 metas, ushering in a new era of Scream that could step out on its own while staying true to Wes Craven's original vision. Unfortunately, not everyone saw it this way. Twisting some of the core concepts and subverting expectations, Scream 4 has Sydney's cousin Jill become the killer this time around, embracing the zeitgeist by showing them the lengths teens will go in order to secure internet fame. While not as reviled as Scream 3, which suffered from a knot of writerly devices that desperately tried to link the first three films into a cohesive trilogy, Scream 4 is still the second worst rated entry in the series. Number two, Excision. From the get-go, Excision serves to surprise, leading with outcast female character Pauline and getting stranger by the second. See, Pauline wants nothing more than to be a surgeon and isn't willing to let her unstable mental state or propensity for lucid delusions hold her back. Fascinated with blood dreaming of deadly sex and practicing her craft on her neighbors, she goes to extreme lengths to further her fantasies and protect her younger sister Grace, whose potentially terminal cystic fibrosis provides the basis for the film's most harrowing scene. Although Excision premiered at the 2012 Sundance Film Festival to a positive reception, nobody saw it thereafter, as it enjoyed a no cinematic release and came during the time before the neon A24 and Blumhouse boom where smaller scale and indie horrors began to really take precedence on cinephiles' watch lists. Plus, it's got a major dose of weird cred as well, provided by Malcolm McDowell and John Waters in supporting roles. Number one, Teeth. Sitting in a strange niche somewhere between the absurd, Teeth is the story of Dawn, an active member of her high school chastity club and all-around model teen who turns out to have a sharp set of pearly whites in her private parts. Like many of the undervalued films in this video, Teeth's genius is in how it uses its tropes against the audience, taking what we know about character archetypes, like the Christian schoolgirl for instance, and putting a new postmodern twist on them. 
Unfortunately, this is kind of a double-edged blade though, that caused many to dismiss it out of hand as sensationalist trash, failing to see the deep satire not just of a patriarchal sex-fearing society, but of its very audience and the preconceptions that we all carry with us into horror movies. And of course, it leaves you with several potent images that you're glad don't feature in your own memories of high school. 